so happy you're here today. This is wonderful, yeah, absolutely great. terrific. It's great. I'm Jeff Coons, and uh, we're here at my studio in New York, and I'm just thrilled to have uh, Eric Kendell uh, here in the studio today. I'm thrilled to be here, Jeff. Jeff, as you know, is one of the world's greatest artists. His range is extraordinary, and his creativity is so deep, and we're really looking forward to his time spent as an artist in residence uh, at the New Zuckerman Brown Brain Behavior Institute. So this is one of the early objects that brought Jeff and me together. These shining balls, which Jeff has embedded in statues, made an enormous impression on me. Because not only can one look at the statue and see a great work of art, but when you look at the ball, you see yourself. For me, it was a wonderful experience because um, uh, I'm Viennese and I was very much influenced by three Viennese art historians. And Alois Regal was the first one that began to focus attention on the beholder's share. He said art history is going to die unless it becomes more scientific. The science it ought to direct itself to is psychology, and the problem it ought to focus on is the beholder's share. How the viewer responds to work of art? Absolutely. The beholder's share is the art. You know, that's where the value is. Uh, it's not in that object. That object can just stimulate, excite, but the art is the perception that the individual has for their own life, their own meanings yes. of you know, how they can expand their parameters and move forward. The reason that I'm making uh, things, I like to believe at least the content that I create uh, for the viewer. I know that the beholders share, they're going to go off and they're going to finish the work in, in their own mind. But I would at least like to take the viewer to a certain perspective, a certain viewpoint. What I love too is the idea of time. And with you know, your research and the memory and, and the aspects of time, uh, I think that a reflectivity uh, really brings everything to the moment. When you have a reflective surface, it really affirms you. And if you move a little, uh, it's, you know, everything changes. So that's the right here, right now. When our president, Lee Bollinger, arrived at Columbia, he looked around and he thought that brain science is, in some ways, perhaps the greatest growth area at the university. Because everyone at the university works on one or another aspect of the mind. If you're in the business school, you're doing decision making. If you're in the law, you reliability of testimony in the court. Every place you go, people are working on the mind. So he was interested in not only in strengthening brain science at Columbia, which is really quite strong, but also in developing bridges between brain science and other disciplines. It struck me it'd be wonderful to actually have an artist in residence. And knowing you and knowing your curiosity, I thought that you would be perfect because you would teach us a great deal about the creative process. Yeah, it's thrilling. I mean, the opportunity to, to learn. And Eric, I would follow you on Charlie Rose. And I always wanted to, to have a dialogue, uh, to have somebody from a psychological perspective, from a psychiatric uh, perspective, just to, uh, to look at my work, to be able to put it in some type of framework. And I think one of the, the wonderful things about art is that, you know, it, it so effortlessly connects all the human disciplines. And to be able to, uh, to be engaged in science and how we think and how to communicate. And, uh, you know, I want to be able to have my works be working on as profound a level as possible. What we plan to do is to actually have you meet individually and in small groups, people working on similar problems, and tell you what they're working on, whether they're working on memory, whether they're working on um, control of movement, working on perception. We have people working on smell, on taste, on vision, really wonderful things. And hopefully that interaction would not only consist of seeing you in our lab, but perhaps you might invite small groups, you know, occasionally into your studio and allow them to see what you have going on here. Uh, that would be just marvelous for them to see and really, you know, 
deeply creative person and how they go about their task. But uh, Eric, I want to be there. And when I say I want to be there, I, you know, I want to, uh, I want to interact. I want to interact with the, uh, the different uh, scientists, uh, the different professors. You know, I like to speak about objectivity from an, you know, the art side and uh, kind of the meaning, the idea of kind of a, a vocabulary that be, could be universal, certain information that we all carry and kind of uh, desire but to really have a, a, a greater understanding of, of really what's objective uh, within us and how we yeah. perform yeah. and perceive information, how those uh, images do become ideas, and to, uh, uh, to continue to learn more about that. We could expose you to what is probably, in all immodesty, the best brain science group in the world, present company excluded. There couldn't be anything more stimulating uh, or a greater platform to interact, to, you know, to have ideas from. I mean, to, I mean, it's like everything's being made accessible as far as uh, the ability to understand a relationship that you have with your own mind and with other people. We should have a great time. Absolutely. Eric, I really I appreciate so much. Oh, I appreciate yeah. this. Great having you on board. That's great.